The most interesting part is it will give you an opportunity to work with different kind of professional non-profit organization. It will help you to build professional skills. How it will give you an exposure. How to work in a professional setting. How a non-profit works. And if this experience will wear ahead, will also help you in your professional career. These internships are very, very crucial and these mentorships really help. The common topics that are taught in the pencil in social work are social problems in India, social work research and statistics, and social work administration. As I mentioned before also, if you have a bent of mind to understand the social, economic, social, economical problems that are surrounding us globally and how they are intertwined with each other, then you would be very much interested to pursue social work. Candidates who have a background in the field of social work, sociology, psychology, political science, or any related field are usually preferred if they want to pursue a PhD course. But trust me, I have many friends who have joined social work in graduation even from science background. So it is your interest to be analytical in your nature, to be able to critically analyze things that will help you in this uh, field of work. So some of the professions that can be taken up after studying DSW or as a social worker are human resource manager in a corporate, public welfare manager in a government or a non-government setting, you can be a consultant, you can be a case worker or something very similar to a counselor but a bit different in nature, you can be a social security officer, you can, be, you can do research also in different things, you can be a teacher, you can be a criminologist or a labor welfare specialist. Things like this also we have many, many opportunities. You can be a project coordinator, a director, a way up the ladder. And you can pursue many other things. These are just few examples. We social workers have a very field to address to. Once you have completed the bachelor's in social work, we pursue the master's in social work, which is of two years. So I have done this from Pune's Karvi Institute of Social Service. There are many schools for it. Here, I would also like to mention something very specifically. It's not that only students from bachelors in social work come to masters in social work. We have students who have graduated in sociology, economics, maybe even chemistry joining masters in social work. Maybe they have developed interest in social work later. It's completely fine. But it's only your bent of mind that would be analyzed. And as this, at this level. Some, of, some people even join master in social work after they have some kind of career experience. Maybe after working two or three years in a non-profit organization or something. Because your work experience also helps in your career. It is not devalued at all. Master in social work is often treated as a professional course Something very much similar to an MBA. Like many people, they join MBA after even working for two years. So I have many colleagues, many friends who have done master social work. So master social work is usually of two years. Here, it basically helps to prepare the students to move from a generalized approach to a more advanced practice. It will focus your core area where you would be working and you would be pursuing. Students will concentrate more on their particular area of interest and will be able to perform an advanced range of roles upon graduation. It's more in, as I mentioned, it's mostly of two years comprising of four semesters and you usually field work internships with different non-profits or profit organizations and according to your field of interest are also part of it and it's compulsory for you to do. But it helps you to build your career always. The field work is very, very important in social work. The field experience actually helps you to learn and also understand how we can relate theory with the practical world, which is out there. In master social work, there are many different specializations. 
two things can happen. One, when you're applying for MSW, you might have to select the specialization beforehand according to your research and your in interest area. Or you might have to select it after the first semester when you have a basic understanding. So these specializations are still of the very common specializations in social work which are offered by the schools or the colleges. These are human resource management, medical and psychiatric social work, urban and rural community development, criminology and correctional administration, family and child welfare, and personal management. If you are studying human resource management, most likely you would be interested to work in a corporate setting. As an HR or a CA corporate social responsibility person, so that you can associate it with many of the non-profit. If you are working with, or if you are studying medical and psychiatric social work, it might happen that you are more interested to maybe work in a hospital scenario, helping the patient, or maybe working with children who have special needs. Like me, if you are interested to study urban rural community development, maybe you are more interested to understand the nitty-gritties or interesting areas of urban, rural and tribal life and help them to solve their problems. By studying criminology, most probably you would like to help the children who are in juvenile justice system so that they can be rehabilitated and lead a normal life and do their counseling. By family, studying family and child welfare, you would be most probably doing family counseling and solving family problems and helping children who are having problems in their development stages. And of course, I would not go into this detail. You can always go ahead and do a PhD also in social work if you are interested, which is usually of two to three years from the date of registration. So in India, there is also a PhD in social work that is offered by most of the reputed colleges. So this is very important. Prefer subjects and qualities to pursue social work. What do the teachers assess when you apply for a bachelor's in social work or a master's social work program? What will they assess? So some of the individual or personal skills are very, very important if you're applying for a social work course. This basically helps you to build yourself for the future. These are empathy. Social perceptiveness, it means ability to understand social problems, to acknowledge that there are some problems, there are some social issues, to analyze them. Critical thinking, this is absolutely important and interesting. Integrity, emotional intelligence, to be very sensitive about other problems. Persuasion, good listening skill, because as a professional social worker, most of Important is rather than giving suggestion to other people, to me, rather than telling other people that this is the solution to understand what the problem is. And trust me, good listening skill and good communication skill will take you way ahead in whichever professional setting you are in future. These are very, very important skills. When you would be interested in applying for BSW or MSW courses, two things can happen. At one is, of course, your marks of class 12, which is taken into account. You might also have to give a written exam or an individual interview or a group discussion also. So please prepare yourself for that. There are many, many online questionnaires for that. There are many common topics which are often uh, available in the internet. Your, you can request your teachers also to help you in that if you want to prepare for it. So please prepare yourself for the individual interviews or the writing examinations for if you are applying for bachelor's in social work or the master's in social work program. So what are the subjects that you can take in high school to pursue social work in the future? Some of the common subjects as I mentioned are sociology, child development, political science, psychology, economics, mathematics, and also foreign language. So why, but also you can study science and if you have a bent of mind to pursue social work in graduation, you can do it. But why this subject 
I mentioned because these are the some of the common subjects which are taught also in the social work courses we are in a more in depth manner. So it helps you to relate better. But either way is also not a problem. You can always go ahead and pursue the course you like. Why mathematics? Because economics and integral part of it. And why foreign language? Because social work is now a global course, and many of the social work uh, students they go abroad for their masters and PhD courses. So if you are interested in it, it's very much suggested. Some of the top social work colleges in India now are Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Delhi School of Social Work, Colleges of Social Work, Nirmal Niketan, Xavier Institute of Labor, uh, Labor Relations. You can also see Faculty of Social Work, Baroda Department of Social Work, Pune. These are the some of the top social work colleges which have absolutely fantastic mentors and teachers. The According to my experience, I can see the mentors and teachers of social work schools, they play a very, very important role, like how your teachers play in your uh, school life. They are absolutely fantastic. So you can go ahead and apply. There are, besides this also, there are many other social work colleges in India which you can apply. So there is IISWBM Calcutta, which offers social work in uh, West Bengal. There is also Vishwarati University. Santini Ketan, which is known for their very old BSW and MSW course. This college is primarily offers full time courses, but if you want to do a part time or distant course, Igu offers a social work course, which is very, very important, uh, very good. Many of my friends have done that. So, these are some of basic ideas about social work and how social work is happening in India. I would really like to answer your questions, so please feel free to share them. Just stop sharing. So, Girls, you can ask your questions. You can put your questions in the chat box or you can ask directly. Go yes, ahead. You can unmute yourself and ask. When uh, teachers, if you feel there are some more things which would help the students, I would be really glad to share it with the students. So I think uh, I would just like to add one more thing. If you want to uh, apply for uh, social work or you want to study social work, just be aware about the day-to-day -day happening out there. Read the newspaper. What are the current situations, current conditions that are happening? Because these are not the knowledge that we can really build in one day. This is an over the period it happens. So be familiar with the current affairs. Read uh, newspapers. Listen to a good news panel. That really, really helps for your future as a person, as an individual, and also for a course like that. Any questions, students? Uh, social work is a demanding work. How does a social work care for a person without getting drained up? Okay, yes. This is a very, very uh, related, important question. This happens to all of us that we all get drained out of social work. I think this is something, uh, so that, uh, I, you will learn over time, like how to separate the problem from yourself and the person and be a bit objectification is a term that we use to understand it. Because we need to take care of our mental health. Sometimes we need to get detached from it. It's a very, you can think about, say that it's a very rude thing to do. No, but if you yourself get drained out, at the end, you won't be able to help a lot of people. So this is a professional practice that we do. 
that okay, this is a problem. I need to solve it, but I cannot really get overwhelmed by it. But this doesn't happen in one day. It happens over time, over experience, and as we grow. It's like how we are in our personal life the same way. And your mentors, your colleagues will support you a lot in this. And your fieldwork experience in your colleges, in your universities will help you in this. Hope I answered your question. Any other question? Students, you can ask me anything. Yes. Uh, question from Nirmala. Ma'am, for doing social work, uh, is it necessary to shift from one place to other? Or it can be done by staying in the same place? So, uh, Nirmala, if you are mentioning about uh, shifting from one city to another, no, it's not always required at all. So, as I mentioned that West Bengal also, so suppose if you are in West Bengal, West Bengal has few good social work colleges, you can do your courses there. You can uh, also start working there. So if you find it interesting, so it's not absolutely mandatory to work there. Like I am from Calcutta. I worked in Calcutta for long. I only have been uh, working in Bangalore for a very brief period of time. But uh, it's absolutely your personal choice. But yes, during the Need, the nature of work would be a bit important. In some kind of work, you will have to travel a bit more. In some work, there is not much travel and work. So just see to that. And the course might involve one or two small internship uh, periods or exposures for which you might have to travel. Otherwise, it's not absolutely required for sure. So uh, Miss, are there any profits in doing this work? So uh, Zoa, all the corporates, all the big corporates, you know, the Intel is there, HP is there. So I primarily now is work with corporates, so I'm part of a non-profit sector. They have a wing called corporate social responsibility. All the corporates, they are going to do something for the society. It is kind of giving back to the society. We social workers can be part of those uh, organizations and corporates as well and also if you are one more from a professional point of view I would also say there are many international and national organizations in the field so please do research your well when you in future you would be joining any organization please, please analyze who is working where and you can what kind of exposure you want that is very, very important. Talk to people, talk to your teachers, your mentor, and then go ahead with it. The role of a mentor is very, very important. And as we grow, we understand the value of it more. So, you and social work is now, it helps us to sustain by ourselves. It has become like any other profession. And you can join, if you are more interested to join any profits, you can join, if, uh, if you are studying medical and psychiatric social work, you can join any of the hospital uh, hospital uh, teams or you can be part of any of the corporates as well. All of them, they have social workers. I, so I hope I answered your question. Yes, ma'am. Any other question? I would be really happy to answer them. Yes, uh, suppose uh, I decide to work in a co uh, corporate system or suppose I want to serve an NGO. So if I'm, suppose, if uh, I'm giving an example, if I'm not satisfied with the work, can I choose another field, like if I'm interested in some uh, somewhere else? Yes, yes, absolutely. So that's not a problem. Usually what happens, the common shift that we see is that people going from non-profit to 
corporates because honestly joining a csr team usually it requires a bit of experience but we all have also seen people who were in csr they have again come back to a kind of non profit field because the idea of non profit organization is again changing with the time it is becoming extremely professional in nature like the organization i work for uh, now it's extremely it's a professional environment so you want to understand a much of a difference if it's a corporate or not or it's a non profit in nature but absolutely you can switch but uh, sometimes it takes time uh, it's better to have your specialization in an area because that is something which is complete if you are interested in the field of health education nutrition counseling whatever it is that is very very important do not switch your fields too often that might be a problem but always absolutely and also when you are uh, if you are doing your masters in social work then choose your specialization very carefully but most of the social work colleges they also do give an option to the students to switch the specialization after the first semester or second semester if there is an opening and if the student is finding being it not that interesting so that is also there so these are the few things which are a bit important i hope i answered your question zara yes ma'am yes ma'am absolutely yes and also uh, many the corporates have their own field of work so if you are suppose you want to join a company like hp so you can do your research that what are the core areas where hp is working on so everywhere if you just type like hp social work hp social responsibility it will come in it is doing education or water it always shows so you can also study that before joining anywhere or pursuing anything any other question please feel free to ask me anything i am really really happy to answer this session is for you so that it could be only fruitful if i am able to uh, help you to understand uh is math important for social service math is not honestly the core subject uh, of uh, especially of bachelor's in social work or in math in social work some basics very really basic mathematics are required if uh, because of an economics is a very important subject of social work service so very really basic uh, of it is required but in future if you want to do research uh, uh, in social work or if you want to do phd in social service then it becomes a bit important because you know like any other phd work or research work it will uh, include some kind of analysis and mathematics and statistics for analyzing the subject that you are or the research that you are doing but definitely not at the graduation level or at the masters level it is not the core subject so by under the question nikita then miss what is the core subject i mean uh, what should we exactly do uh... core subjects as i mentioned are taught which are common subjects which are taught are sociology psychology political science economics the language subjects are usually there like english or it can be or one more subject a bit about our social policies or the laws that we have in our country are taught and according to your specialization you would be taught the further subjects so the subjects that are taught under urban and rural community development would be a bit different than medical and psychiatric social work you will also have a basic knowledge of some of the medical terminologies it, because some basic it differs from school to school but it is not something a uh, key knowledge that you have also the schools of social work will 
we do few basic techniques. These are called, which is called group work, case work, and community development. These are actually the core techniques of social work. Like case work helps us to be individually, group work is a specific group, and community organization. But this will only be taught at the school. And the most important thing how you should prepare for if you are applying for a social work school is big up to date about the current affairs. And I, like you can read a bit about the different theories of social work and not, but that's not really important. And the key thing that I feel is very important if you are pursuing social work is critically able to write something. So when, suppose there's a topic, I write the good things about it, I write the bad thing about it, and also what can be done about it. Being critically able to think is something which would be very, very important because as you go ahead in your career, there would be many papers where you would be able to write, do a critical analysis of it. It is a very, very common thing in social work academic field. So that is something I think practice makes us good. That is something you can even practice from this level. It helps in every field, trust me. And as, as the rest of the knowledge, but as I also mentioned, I have seen students who come to, coming from absolutely science background, but they have come to social work background because they have a very uh, a bent for mind for it, and also an ability to do critical uh, critical analyzing continuously. So. The course of sociology, political science, psychology, economics should help you for sure. I hope I answered your question, Joa. Yes, yes. And also you can be aware of what are the latest uh, changes in the legal system that are happening and how they are impacting the different uh, uh, societies. Today, because that is often also a common uh, subject or a paper or a common subject even in the written exam also. Okay. Any other question? I would be really happy to answer. What qualities should the students nurture in order to develop to good social workers? Yes. So I think, uh, the I, which I mentioned in one of our slides, so I think the students really nurture the sense of emo emotional intelligence. This is something that we now really talk nowadays a lot about. And also, good listening skills is very, very important. More than good communication skills are absolutely as important, but good listening skills are absolutely really, really appreciated in this field. And also integrity so, and empathy. These are very, very important. And one more thing that I would say is very important, I have not mentioned this in the PPT, is non-judgmental attitude. It is very, very important to have it as a person, as a friend, as a colleague, and also very, very important when we are professional social workers. Suppose there is an A person and I am the social worker. The person A is sharing his or her problem with me. It's very important that I listen. I be a good listener and also I listen without judging that person. Then only I would be able to adequately help that person. This is also a skill or a quality that we develop over experience, with time, with age. Because if we are really judgmental in nature, we won't be able to help people adequately, support people adequately, and our visions would be colored. We would be biased in nature. No matter from whichever problem, whatever what they are having it, we should keep our personal biases aside and try to help that person, support that person. That is, I think, being non-judgmental is one of the key factors if you want to be really, really successful in this field. Hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. 
Any, any other question? And I hope you all understand what uh, empathy means. Empathy is basically going into the other person's shoes and then understanding their problem. So if I have a problem, I have pro uh, B has a problem and I'm trying to understand it, I don't try to analyze this from my standpoint, from my surrounding. I try to put myself in B's place and then try to understand it. Because unless I'm able to put it in B's place, it, I really won't be able to uh, understand the entire situation. And also, if you are associated with any kind of non-profits in your student career, now many non-profits, they offer internships. It also really helps you in, the, in your career, in your understanding, in your overall development. I think that is also something is really, really appreciated by social work schools. And I think Loretta really encourages it also. Uh, so you can be part of any kind of non-profit. There are many, many organizations in Calcutta also. You can take up small, small things that you want to do and do it. And your internship in your so undergraduation, your post-graduation will really, really prepare you for your future. Do your internship courses very well. They're really, really important for your career. No matter if you're doing it at school level, graduation level, Really have a very healthy relationship with your mentor. Respect them. Learn from them. They have a lot of experience which we don't. It really helps. Any other question? Uh, yeah, Miss, can I become a teacher after doing bachelor in social service? So, uh, usually, masters in social service is uh, recommended uh, for this. I would say, if you want to be a teacher, at least complete your masters, and then you become a teacher. Because unless you want to be a teacher in social work and you have not done your masters, you won't have enough knowledge about the different specializations of social work and somehow our knowledge would be a bit limited so if you can also do it in business course if you don't want to do a regular course and you want to work and simultaneously do it go ahead with it but my personal recommendation would be if you are a teacher please complete your masters and then become one so that you at least have a holistic knowledge of the subject because bachelor's in bachelor degree will only create a foundation of it. It won't give you a holistic perspective of the entire thing. And somehow it limits us. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. And uh, in Nikita, I've seen many of my professors doing their PhD even when they are 50 plus. So age is never by you. You can always go ahead and continue your study. And it's, it's social work is always a learning curve. We go from one method to another. Technologies are changing. The processes are changing. So if no matter whichever field you are going for, keep yourself up to date. Now these things are changing so fast. So this is, it's not like previous years. Now we have to continuously study do research about our profession, see what's new is happening, and then go ahead with it. Uh, any other question? I would be really happy to answer. Girls, do you have any more questions? If Nandini is willing to answer your question, any more questions, girls? You can also gather your questions together later and uh, seek the help of one of your teachers and email it to me. I would be happy to answer them, always whatever support you require. It's amazing to see and such talented kids out there and such an amazing uh, webinar today arranged by you. And thank you so much. For inviting me for today, it's absolutely a pleasure. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nandini, for having taken out time to be with us and share such invaluable input that will inspire and mold the lives of so many of our students. Very many of them would be definitely inspired by the work that you do. I'm sure they will follow it up with many more questions. We will be in touch with you. We are so happy that you're with us and you've uh, come to the Loreto family. We are very happy and grateful to you. We will be in touch with you. Thank you so much for having taken out time to be with us this evening. On behalf of our principal, our teachers, our students, I take this opportunity to thank you once again. We hope to meet you once again very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words and have a very good evening, have a happy weekend and stay safe and wish all the best to all the students for their future and career. Thank you once again and all the very best to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Girls, you can leave. Thank you, teachers. Good, good evening and thank you, teachers. Thank you, teachers.